Christian and I here for Car Player TV and for this edition of Strategy, I've got Justin Bonnemel. Justin, I have to admit, I'm really excited to talk to you about Strategy because you are so articulate when talking about this and anything that has to do with poker. So thank you so much for talking with me. So if I like stumble and sound like an idiot, like I can make I'm you I'm going to be really disappointed. Too. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, today we're going to talk about board texture. For those who don't know, can you explain exactly what board, te board texture is? Uh, board texture is just what the flop is like. For example, there's a big difference between a flop like king, queen, ten with three hearts and right. a flop like nine, six, deuce. On one flop, you know, assuming you have good players that play good hands before the flop, they're a lot likely to have something huge versus on the other flop nine high, maybe they have a set, most likely nothing. All right, well, let's talk about a few specific situations in which reading board texture is important. Let's say you've raised um, in position with ace-king, and what kind of flops are you looking for when you miss to continuation bet on? Um, when So we raise and we get called yes. by, like, one person? Are we in position, out of position? In, in, posi in position against one, one so opponent. So, like, one of the blinds. Um, it, it depends a lot on the opponent in terms of making a c-bet. Obviously, we want to hit an ace or a king. Um, if we're playing, like, a really aggressive opponent and the stacks aren't that deep, if the flop comes, like, 5-5 five, five deuce, a lot of times it just it's best just to bet and get the money in now, like, even if they raise, like... Mm -hmm. The flop is so dry, and they call it out of the blinds. Like, maybe they have a pair, but even if they do, you have a lot of outs. The flops you really want to avoid betting on are the flops something like 10-8-7 um, with, like, a flush draw, just because there's so many hands they can check raise with. A lot of them are strong hands. Some of them are bluffs, but you just don't know what to do in that spot. Okay. I find myself in that situation when I have, let's say, pocket aces. I raise, I get one call, and I'm in position, and they check to me, but it's a super draw-heavy board, 9-10 jack two spades or something, I don't have a spade. So if I get check raised in that kind of kind of flop and the board texture is really draw heavy, am I supposed to be continuing there? It really depends on the opponent. Um, also, if, if it's a tournament or cash game, if it's the type of opponent that um, is only check raising the nuts, then you, obviously you can bet and fold if they're a really right. tight player. Mm -hmm. But if it's like a, an aggressive player that's just been you know putting chips into every pot, then it's fine just to either call and get them to put more money in on the turn or just stick the stacks in. You really just have to know what type of opponent you're up against. All right. Now, another situation um, that I was thinking about is when you have a super dry a dry board. And the situation that I, I'm thinking of specifically is, okay, so the flop comes king, rag, rag, and I continuation bet. And they know that I either have to have a king or nothing. So they raise me. It's like... I feel really lost when, when there's a really dry board, but they know that I need to have a certain kind of hand. So so how do you get used to being in those situations, and, and what kinds of things are you thinking about when maybe thinking of three betting or something? Well, um, before you decide to see bet, there's a lot of things you have to think about. For example, if you raise the button and the small blind calls, a lot of people tend to think, oh, I'm the one that raised before the flop. I'm more likely to have a king or whatever top pair is on the board. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times... Calling at a position from the small blind, that's not something you should do very often. So in a lot of those situations, they'll actually have a much stronger range, range than you because the hand they need to continue with from the small blind is stronger. So when you bet a flop like king, deuce, deuce, you have to be aware of that. Uh, what position you're raising from, how likely it is you have a king. And you also want to balance it. Um, obviously, you should, you know, it's fine to bluff some of the time, but you should still have a king there a good percent of the time when you bet. And a good way to mix that up is just check hands that have showdown value, like pocket nines or ace jack, for example. Just check those back and then play a turn. So the hands you should be betting with are hands that have absolutely nothing or top pair. Okay. Or better if you have that. For beginners who are learning how to read board texture, is there any one or a couple things that you can tell them to keep in mind when learning how to do that? Um, well, the biggest thing you have to be aware of, just to simplify as much as possible, are there a lot of draws in the board? And, you know, that has a lot of implications, a lot of different things you can do. One of the most basic ones is, if my opponent's really likely to have a draw, I don't want to let him in super cheap. So if I bet like one-eighth of the pot, he can have a gut shot and it's still correct for him to call. Right. So in a lot of spots, you actually want to bet a lot bigger when there's a lot of draws on the board. But in the example we were talking about earlier, like on the king-deuce-deuce deuce swap, you can just bet half the pot there. And if their option is, you know, check raise to represent the king or let you have the pot, you're accomplishing exactly what you would if you bet the entire pot. So basically just bet more on draw heavy boards. All right, well thank you so much, Justin. Thanks for having me. Christiana,
Justin Bonnemo for Card Player TV.